Sabaha everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to talk about the Nord N100 by OnePlus. Technically the cheapest OnePlus, the cheapest Nord that we can pick up uh, anywhere as a brand new device. Um, and in the US they had a sale that actually had it selling for 150 bucks just a few days ago and I decided to pick it up at that price. So today we're going to talk about the Nord N100. Uh, is it worth it at 150 or even at the normal $180 price tag? Uh, is it something that you should consider, specifically since it's a OnePlus? Are they still able to deliver on the speed and, of course, the performance that we've come to love from OnePlus at 150 bucks? This is TK. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Let's go ahead and dig into the Nord N100. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So this is the Nord N100, uh, released at the same time roughly about the N10 and the N100, they released together. And then earlier in the year in 2020, Nord or OnePlus released the original Nord and that one was obviously running the 765G. So that's a different kind of mindset. Uh, the N100 and the N10 are much more budget friendly. They're considered to be more of the entry level to mid range type of experience. And the N100 takes the king or takes the crown here because it is the cheapest of all. Now I picked it up for 150 bucks and I wanna be able to share with you guys my impressions of it. And is it worth something or is it worth for you to pick up or even consider um, specifically since there's a carrier version here in the US. Now, when it comes to the unboxing itself, uh, the box itself is very simple. Nord N100, you can definitely see it right there, OnePlus. So this is OnePlus's uh, budget line of devices. And of course, once you take it out, uh, let's go ahead and take it out. The device is right there. We have a material SIM removal tool here at the top. Uh, we have a slightly different charger than what we've seen before. This is an 18 watt charger. So this is not the uh, Warp Charge 30T. This is just an 18 watt charger, although you're able to use any OnePlus charger as it still is compatible with all of those. It just charges at 18 watts. Uh, and of course, they also include a USB Type A to USB Type C standard uh, OnePlus colors to be able to charge up our device. And that's pretty much it. Now, aesthetically, when we look at them, the N100 and the N10 look very similar. You'll notice that there's somewhat of a similar camera array on the top left, a fingerprint sensor on the back. Of course, on the top, not much other than a microphone. Now, on the bottom, we have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on both devices, USB-C for charging, a microphone, of course, a bottom firing speaker that is married to the top firing earpiece to be able to give us stereo speakers, which is also a very unique. Now, they kept that at the $150 or $180 price point, which is definitely a very interesting uh, offering at this price. Price range. As far as the material, we only have one selection here for the N100. Again, very nice considering it definitely has that nice reflective, smoky uh, appearance. Uh, not exactly the same material as the N10, but again, at 150 or 180, this is a really nicely tailored experience so far. So let's start talking about what do you get with the N100 that makes it so unique, and of course, how did OnePlus tailor this experience for us to be able to get it so cheap? First things first, on the back, we don't have wireless charging, but we do have a fingerprint sensor. We have a triple camera setup here, a 13 megapixel primary shooter, and two accompanying two megapixel sensors, a macro and a depth sensor. So realistically, one grid camera, which I feel like is the best camera of all of the ones that we have in the back. Now capabilities as far as video is 1080p 30 will be the maximum since we're running the Snapdragon 460. So that's something to keep in mind. A dual tone LED flash, as I mentioned. Uh, we also have a 5,000 milliampere battery in here that is charged with the 18 watt charger that comes in the box. Now, when we flip it over to the front, unlocking it with the fingerprint works perfectly. We have a front facing camera here that is rated to be an eight megapixel camera. Again, also capable of shooting 1080p 30 frames per second. So pretty much 1080p 30 all around. Uh, performs quite well for a selfie. I would say probably though, if you're gonna wanna get the best experience out of the N100, the 13 megapixel sensor in the back is gonna be your best shooter. So even if you wanna take portrait imagery, I'd recommend you using that one in the back. Uh, the front one works great. I just feel like the exposure is done much better on the sensor in the back. So as we talked about it, 6.52 uh, is a 90 Hertz HD plus, which essentially is a 720p resolution. Again, 13 to two cameras in the back with an eight in the front. We have four gigs of RAM with 64 gigs of internal storage, expandable via micro SD card, which is also another unique feature here, up to 256 gigs of internal storage, which is definitely very nice. The Snapdragon 460, Android 10.0 with Oxygen OS 10.5, definitely running the latest spec, and again, the OnePlus Nord N100. Now, this is an LTE model, so just to keep in mind, there's no 5G with the 460. Now, the UI elements that we get in here are exactly what you expect from Oxygen OS 10.0. We don't have the new customizations that we got with Android 11. So those things, uh, once that update does get pushed to the N100, we'll be able to hopefully get some of those optimizations. 
Uh, the features that we have in here are obviously very much what you expect for uh, Oxygen OS 10. So we have night mode, do not disturb, location, auto save, reading mode, of course, there, hotspot, Zen mode is present, and of course, screen recording. Uh, and any of the options also that we also have under the settings here. So under the display, you're able to customize the refresh rate. So under advanced, you can go in there, either have it at 90 hertz or 60. I feel like 90 hertz with a 720p uh, resolution display will never kill the battery, especially when we have a 5000 milliamp here. So from that sense, I think you're going to have a very long battery life on this device. Uh, and of course, here, the front uh, camera, if you want to be able to hide the camera, you can definitely change it. I personally like to keep it there as again, it's a larger display. Why not enjoy it? Now, of course, under customizations, we're able to customize uh, all the way, basically lock screen, clock style, accent colors, uh, system icons. You can actually customize them to basically work to the way that you want them. You can say cancel, you can say save it here, and it'll apply it right away. So you can definitely see it applied directly into the notification shade. I'll go over that one more time, and you can see that. Uh, the little hiccups that you see every once in a while, again, is due to the Snapdragon 460. It is not a very powerful processor, but it is more than capable of handling our daily activities. Uh, sound and vibration, as I mentioned to you guys, we do have a stereo speakers implementation with a headphone jacket that's present on the bottom. And we still have the ability of setting up the, uh, the EQ here with the Dirac uh, tuner that we have built in. Audio on this actually hasn't been that bad considering the fact that this is a, again, $150 phone. You're able to listen to your music wired or wirelessly. And of course, stereo speakers here make it even better. We'll get a chance to test it out in a second. Live caption, of course, is supported here from Android 10.0. Uh, apps and permissions, security lock, as we talked about them before. Battery, again, we have the ability of setting up our customizations. Uh, storage, 64 gigs of internal storage, expandable. And of course, digital well-being. Uh, and under utilities, we can definitely some of the options. So we have parallel apps, app lockers in here, scheduled on and off, pocket mode, of course. OnePlus Switch is also supported. And under the OnePlus laboratory, we only have the ability of forcing dark mode on more applications that normally don't support it. Now, under the system setting, we can definitely see here, we do have OTG support, which is definitely very nice. You have to actually just turn that on. And then once you plug in any kind of OTG adapter in here with any kind of uh, drive, uh, you'll be able to basically say check in there and then of course and then once it's done you'll be able to basically explore it go in there and see what's going on with the actual file system it's very very nice and one thing to remember before you take out the actual uh, thumb drive make sure you eject it and it does time out on its own so if you don't use it after some time uh, it does actually turn itself off you can set up multiple uh, users ram boost is in here and of course system updates uh, now this one's running the december 5th uh, last update is we received which is essentially including the december 5th security patch update so definitely not running the latest but again uh, keeping us up to date as late as december of last year now we are going to talk about the fact that the display has a lot of bezels obviously the chin at the bottom is very very pronounced but again keep in mind what you're paying for this device it literally is brand new out of the box for about 180 bucks uh, again got it for 150 so the overall experience is really surprising what you get out of the box with a device like this i really feel like oneplus did a lot of homework and they did a really good tailoring experience for us here for games, I did install a few games. I definitely want to share with you guys exactly how games perform on here. So we have PUBG, Asphalt 9, Call of Duty Mobile. And of course, I have my normal social media, TikTok for me, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and all the different apps. I did also install the device information. Uh, most of the information we already talked about that is already in here. But as I mentioned to you guys, the Snapdragon 460 is, the, is a octa-core processor, and that's what's powering the system here. Now, it is accompanied by the Adreno 610, which is going to be our GPU. But again, overall, very nice experience. Now, when we jump into the actual camera itself, we only have uh, 1 and 2x. Now, that's a digital crop on the 13 megapixel sensor. There is no zoom lens. Uh, we have the ability of turning on HDR as well as uh, their auto tuning uh, capability. They call it Dazzle Color, which enables the colors to pop a little bit more. And of course, uh, we have the ability of basically taking video, typical, as I mentioned, again, 1080p 30 on the front, 1080p 30 on the back and that's going to be the maximum resolution. Portrait photography on the front and on the back. Uh, best performance will be running on the back as I'm sharing with you guys some of those pictures right now. The front facing camera does a decent job, but I feel like the images look a little bit better on the back facing sensor. Now under more, we have a couple more options. We have pro mode, time-lapse, macro, and pano. The macro is that two megapixel sensor that we talked about it in the back that's accompanying the 13 megapixel sensor. Uh, images with the macro didn't come out that well. So for me, I feel like literally uh, the best picture that you're going to be able to get out of this uh, is using the 13 megapixel sensor. And I would probably say is take a decent picture there and crop it in in post, which would work much better for you than try to take a macro. Uh, macro photography for some reason seems to be a little bit oversaturated. But let's go ahead and jump in real quick to a front facing and back facing sensor uh, demo of how the video and audio sound like on the N100. 
So first thing we're going to start off is the front facing camera on the brand new N100. Uh, capable of shooting 1080p 30 frames per second. Pretty much the same experience you get out of the back facing sensor. Although the back facing sensor is a little bit more powerful at 13 megapixels. So 8 on the front, 13 on the back. But this should be a good example of how the audio and video sound like on the N100. Let's go ahead and switch over on the primary shooter in the back. Switching over to the primary shooter in the back, we primarily have one main lens. So I really feel like we only have one lens. So no wide angle lens, no telephoto. Uh, it does allow us to actually crop in but not in video so something to keep in mind and again this should be a good example of the N100 uh, 1080p 30 on the back which is the same as the front uh, and again this is the maximum resolution with some dogs and some birds around me hope this sounds good for you now of course for this one we're going to raise the volume all the way to the top that's 100 percent here you even you're also able to customize the different options in here and of course activate and disable live caption built in here that's part of the system that we had here The sound on this actually is not bad. It does sound loud enough for us to be able to enjoy content on it. So watching movies, consuming content on this is not going to have any problems. Uh, I would probably say that it's not the basiest sound, but again, definitely sounds really nice. And the fact that we have a 90 hertz display with uh, basically stereo speakers and a headphone jack and an SD card at 150 bucks is ridiculous because literally some of these features don't exist on even more expensive devices on the market. Now, as we've seen before with other OnePlus devices, we have game space that's definitely installed here. So it automatically recognizes different apps that I already have installed. But if it doesn't recognize it, you're able to manually go in there and of course install them and get them running. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that we do have options here that are similar to Fanatic mode that we've seen in other devices, although it's a tailored experience on Fanatic mode. It doesn't actually give us the exact same experience, but definitely if you want to be able to turn it on, you can turn it on there and it will activate. It does give you the option whenever you jump into a game. So let's go ahead and jump into a few gaming real quick with Asphalt 9, Call of Duty Mobile, and of course, PUBG Mobile on our N100. The N100 is definitely a very nicely tailored experience from Nord and OnePlus at $150 to $180 depending on which price point you get. 
The overall experience here with the Snapdragon 460 is definitely of a, an entry-level budget-friendly device. It's not going to be the fastest smartphone, it's not going to be the, the most snappiest processor, but again, at 150, we're not expecting that level of performance. We want it to be a reliable device, we want it to give us a obviously a good smooth experience, and the overall performance that we get with the N100 is definitely on par for the $150 price point. So keep in mind, what you're getting here is a 90 hertz 6.5 inch display that is a 720p resolution with the marry that with a 5000 milliampere battery the battery will last you for days so it's not going to be an issue there it's a large enough of a display that you can enjoy content on it at 720p resolution as you saw with the youtube demo that i did with the sound test it actually can get the maximum of 720p 60 frames per second the cameras can give us 1080p 30 on front and on the back and of course i feel like the 13 megapixel sensor is the best performer of all so when I really want to kind of summarize what the N100 is offering us is actually a very good compelling $150 to $180 smartphone experience from OnePlus. Oxygen OS 10.0 with the 4 gigs runs very nicely. The UI elements are very good. I did notice though that when we were playing some of the games, anything that required very fast paced movement, like when we were playing Asphalt 9, the graphics weren't really able to keep up all, uh, as much as I wanted them to. That could have also been the fact that because I was doing a screen recording at the same time as playing the game, but overall the experience for me felt like a little bit uh, jittery when I was playing Asphalt 9. Now, when I switched it over to PUBG as well as Call of Duty Mobile, which are definitely fast paced, but not as much moving items in the actual uh, field of view, I guess, the overall experience was actually not bad. I liked what we saw in there. And of course, OnePlus gave, gave us a really good tailored experience in that sense. So would I recommend the N100 to anybody looking for a device from OnePlus and they want to stay on a very tight budget? Absolutely. I think what we're getting here essentially is a very good budget-friendly smartphone for about $150 to $180, depending on where you get it on sale or on the regular price. Like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much for the support. And of course, please, please make sure to let me know in the comments below, what do you guys think of the N100? Is it compelling enough for you guys to pick up, even if it is just a backup device or somebody for maybe a young person in your family that you just want to get them a smartphone, but not necessarily spend that much money on it. This is TK. I'll see you guys in the next video.